Hello everyone, welcome to the start of electrostatics. So, if we think about an atom, we know that a typical atom has a nucleus, and in that nucleus we have protons, which are positive, we have neutrons, which are neutral, so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna put anything there. So I'm gonna put some P's over here and some N's. There's one N. Then on the outside, we've got electrons. If, or what I first want to say is that pro electrons are negative. So if we look at this molecule as a, or if we look at this atom as a whole, it's got two electrons and it's got two protons, which are positive. So the overall charge of this molecule is zero. And so if you had to put a, another atom of the same type, then there wouldn't really be any force between these two because they are both neutral. But if I do the following, in this atom now, I now have four electrons and I've got two protons. So I've got a total charge, which will be two minus four because the four electrons are negative, And so that gives me minus two. For this one on the right, the charge will be two protons minus the one electron, and so I've got a charge of one. So now, because we have a because we actually have a charge on both of these that isn't zero, there's some type of force that will be exerted between these two. They will either attract each other, or they will push each other away. We all know that opposites attract. And so because the one charge is minus two and the other one is one, they will attract each other. So we have a formula that allows us to calculate that force. That formula is the following. It says that the force between two charges is equal to K, which is a constant that will be given to you on your periodic table. It has a value of nine times 10 to the nine, not your periodic table on your formula sheet. Q1 is the charge of one of them, so for example, the two, and then Q2 is the charge of the other one, so it's the one. Notice that I didn't say minus two. That is very important. Don't include the signs. So if one of them is negative, don't put that in this calculation. That's important. Then R is going to be the distance between the two charges. Now let's talk about the units. Q1 and Q2 must be in Coulomb. That is the standard unit for charge. R must be in meters. So let's try an example. Here we have two charges and let's just give them a distance of three meters. So the formula which is obviously always going to be given to you, is F equals to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. K is 9 times 10 to the 9. It's a constant on your formula sheet. Q1, it doesn't matter which one we choose. Let's just take that one. It's 3 coulombs. This one is minus 2, but we do not put the minus 2 over there. The distance between them is 3, and then many students forget the to the power of 2. And that's going to give you a 6 with nine zeros. Now, what are the units? Well, it's just a force, and so that's just gonna be Newtons. Now, what would these two do to each other? Would they attract or repel? Well, because they are opposite charges, they would attract, and so you would say attract. You're not gonna say left or right, because this one is obviously gonna move right, and this one is gonna move left. So it wouldn't be correct to say left or right. Now, something that confuses a lot of students is they're not always going to give you the standard unit of coulombs. There are four other types that they can use, and they typically do use these. They could use millicoulomb, microcoulomb, nanocoulomb, and picocoulomb. And you need to know how to convert each of those back to coulomb. So if they give you microcoulomb, then you have to multiply that with 10 to the minus 3, and that'll give you the coulombs that you want. If they give you microcoulomb, 
then you times it by 10 to the minus 6. And guys, please just learn this. I've got so many students who keep forgetting these. It's because they're not learning it. Go home or sit at home and just spend 15 minutes drilling this into your head. You will remember it. I promise you. Don't always keep forgetting it. It's going to make you very anxious in the test. There we go. And then picocoulomb is that over there. The most popular ones would be these two, with this one being the most popular. So go ahead, go learn those. It follows a pattern, 3, 6, 9, 12, and you just need to somehow remember this for yourself. And so that's an introduction to electrostatics. Thank you for watching.